Hallelujah. Amen. Every barrier on your path to progress is finally destroyed. Amen. Whatever the devil has been using against you in your life today, they are finally destroyed. Amen. Watch it. This service is a service you live to remember forever. Amen. Say stronger amen. amen. Today is the last day of our prayer and fasting. And John 7, 37 says, the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus Christ stood and said, if anyone is thirsty, let him come and drink. The last day is everybody's day. Say, today is my day. Today is my day. Say that every minute. Every last day is a great day by God. So today is a great day for you. Yes. Say strong. Yes. Say today is my day. Today is my day. Say today is, day. Say today is my day. And what made the day your day is because of the special testimony that is coming. Yes. Remember when they say somebody said yeah, it's birthday, like the um, Dickin that shared testimony, you know. He said, Today is my day, my birthday. Your day is a day that God has organized for you. The whole world will celebrate you today. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Now, maximizing the blessedness of prayer and fasting. Part 4 B. Second Timothy 3 16 to 17. It says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. All scriptures, they are meant for instructions. They are meant for the proof. And the instruction of the hour is 21 day prayer and fasting. Please understand that even if you have not fasted to, since 21 days, if you fast today, you will see the results. Because God is not a respecter of person. God is a lover of those who are obedient. And you see, obedience, you might have been fasting since 20 days. And if you don't fast today, you may not get anything. Because God, the Bible says, he that endure to the end, saved shall be saved. So those who refuse to endure to the end, they may not be saved. Today is the last day of the 21 days. And watch it. It's the last day you ever cry about this situation again. Yeah. Your days of weeping are finally over. Yeah. Your days of sorrow are finally over. Yeah. That lady shared testimony. Say thanks to Pastor. Not thanks to Pastor. Thanks to God. God is the one doing the wonders. The Pastor here is only being privileged to be used as a tool to the glory of His name. Look at the testimony of first service that that woman came to share. She said, "As dot, her son has been stooling. I mean, she stools on herself at age eight, and as a result, you know, she does that. The son does that because he's absent-minded." Even some are three, they don't do it again. Some are two, they are so conscious of it. But now eight. But blessed be God, she came on Tuesday. I touched her by, the privilege, by privilege. Pray for her as a point of contact to her son in school. And go back to school. The son never put. And since that day, God delivered her, the child, to the glory of God. Now, it is not me. It is God. God does things the way he wants it. And he chooses to use, he, God has a prerogative of who he uses to bless you. He has a prerogative. That is, is, it, is his, it is his choice. That's why I believe the Lord your God shall be established. Believe his prophet shall, shall, shall he prosper. The same mantle service that we're about to do now, that we're doing now, somebody took the mantle last 2016. His wife died. Thank God, second service. Some of us were here. His wife died, as he literally died, Approved death. But he remembered the mantle. He meandered his way back to the theater. Placed it on the face of the baby, of the wife. She jumped back to life after 10 minutes. And now, both the mother and the baby, they are still alive. The power of God is available here today. Amen. And to surely visit you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, prayer and fasting is our focus these 21 days. But this service, 
our focus is the place of empowerment through prayer and fasting. Maximizing the blessing of prayer and fasting is a teaching series, but we are focusing on empowerment. Now, by way of introduction, understand that God's commandments are for our profitability. We are meant to engage the world to maximize the best of life. So we are living on the world to enjoy the best of God. We live on the world to enjoy the best of God. We live on the world. We live by the word, on the word, by the word, to enjoy the best of God. Those who are enjoying the best of God, they run by the word. And the word says, Believe the Lord your God, it shall be established. Believe the prophet is sent in your direction, you will prosper. And what is the prophet saying to us this season? 21 day prayer and fasting. So if you obey, the Bible says, if ye shall be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the fruit of the land. So what am I saying this morning? Understand that obedience to the instructions of the hour is what makes us a commander of the environment. Obeying fast. For example, Papa is not here in South Africa. But obedience to his instruction makes you a commander in South Africa. He's not here in Pretoria. But obeying what he instructs makes us to be able to construct our life in a glorious way. May we remain obedient. Amen. Say a stronger amen. amen. Fasting is commanded for specific benefits. Fasting is commanded for specific benefits. Specific, not general. Specific. You don't fast for fasting's sake. You are wasting your time. Is this not the fast I have chosen? Number one, to lose the bands of wickedness. We live in a wicked world. I prayed with someone some time ago. The friend became a beast and entered the person. Wicked world. Wickedness of the devil. Wickedness of the devil. Friend became a beast. Eh? Imagine. Just because of the other friend. Because he's, he's trying to get the boyfriend. Became a beast. Wicked world. And started mani- molesting this girl. That's why we need power. Innocent girl. Trying to manipulate the destiny to be frustrated. Ah! Wicked world. Became a beast. And started making the girl to misbehave against her wish. I've seen so many things, I'm telling you, in this environment. So, we need empowerment to lose the bands of wickedness. There are some things you are doing now, it's not your choice. But after you finish, you say, Ash, I've done it again. Oh, it's not your choice, it's a force. So, we need empowerment to lose the band of such forces. Imagine, last year, this is the way it's the year. Three years ago, this is where you started. Four years ago, that's where you started. You have not changed. There is, there is a chain that is making you to go around the circle. In this service, such chains shall be broken. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Whatever is making you to do what you don't like, whatever is making you to go around the circle, such forces are destroyed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. To lose the burden of wickedness, to undo heavy burden. Burden or burden, whatever you, how you call it. Whatever you are carrying that is oppressing you, some don't feel like even living because living has become a burden. That's why people commit suicide. They feel like killing themselves. Some don't like going to work. Not because they don't want to work, but there's a burden on them that what am I going to work for? Some think as if death is the best thing. It's the money thought. The devil has put all manner of loads on your mind. Everyone oppressed in that category, in this service. You are free in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. To let the oppressed go free. There are some families, they are under oppression. And every child, they born in that family, 
inherited oppression. Yeah. As you born a child like this, welcome to oppression's family. And that's why you see some people, what they are doing from childhood is not their choice. There's a force pushing them. It's an oppression. That's why we pray and fast. To let your prayers go free. The oppression of my family is over. Ah, what is the matter? Devil, listen to me. If you don't deal with the devil, you will never escape evil. If you don't deal with the devil around you, evil will become your counterpart. So when you see the traces of devil around you, deal with it. Otherwise, evil is looming. Anything that does not look good is not from God. Every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord, from above. From the Father of light. So everything, every evil and imperfect gift comes from the devil. So when you see things that are negative, what personally, when I, people by privilege, I receive call every now and then, you know, I don't need to know you. No, it's not important. I hate evil in the life of people. And I use everything I'm privileged to know, advice, guidance, whatever, to be sure they're free. Please, hate evil and hate the devil. So that you react vehemently to free. To let your prayers go free. I'd like you to know that what you are going through now, if you don't deal with it, it will get worse. If you don't deal with it, it will get worse. When the devil stretches his finger, or stretches his finger, and you, you don't talk, he will, remove it, he will release more three fingers. You don't talk. Five fingers, you don't talk. Stretch his arm, you don't talk. I'm telling you, you are finished. But if you release fingers, stop! stop. Ah, sorry. That's the end. But many of us, the devil stretches his finger. We say, well, that's life. Four fingers, you know, it's one of those things in life. Five fingers, I know God will deliver me. The hand, I'm telling you, are gone. Ephesians 4, 27, give no place to the devil. 4 Peter 5, 9, resist him. Resist him. Res the Bible says, whom ye resist steadfastly. 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9. So, but if you must do all this, power is required. You can't resist the devil by choice. You resist the devil by force. Whom um, resist steadfast in faith? Resist. Don't assist. Many of us will be assisting the devil by our disposition. They will say that, ah, it go better, it go better, it yeah, go better. It go better, it go better, and your life is going down. Somebody touches them to resist. He said, No, I know I'll be free one day, one day. I'll be free one day, one day. I'll be free until he finishes you. <laughs> Sorry, Oprah. <laughs> don't watch the devil. Our father said, Whatever you don't want, you don't watch. You're having a headache one week. He said, No, it's one of those things. I know I'll be free. It's the sun. Are you the one in the sun? I don't know which is in the sun. Now, your menstrual cycle is abnormal. He said, well, you know, I'm a woman. If it doesn't happen to me, who will happen to you? Ah. Now, there are some ways by which we have, we have condoned evil. It has now become our lifestyle. Please understand, any evil around you is of the devil. And today, by the power of the mantle, you shall be free in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. But we need power. Because without power, we cannot dominate our environment. But the Bible says, this kind go ahead not except by prayer and by fasting. Which means prayer and fasting is a vital platform to securing power. Oh Lord, thou art my God. Only will I seek thee. My soul thirst for thee. My flesh longer for thee. In a dry and a thirsty land where there is no water. That is, instead of me looking for water, I need power. I have no food. I have no drink. Yet, it's not my desire. My desire is power. 
to see thy power. If I don't have power, I will suffer. Lord, give me power. To see thy power. And you see, when you have power, glory will follow. Because power attracts glory. When you are in power, everybody sing your glory. Hey, hey. But not because of anything, but because of your power. When you see a municipality leader or a minister or a president, you, they may not like you, but because you're in power, they will, they will show you that you're like, ah, our president, our governor. Not because of anything, but because of that power. When you go, you say, nonsense. Why? Because it's not... Be when you return again, ah, okay, oh you're welcome, sir. You're welcome, sir. Thank you, sir. God bless. Power is the one shocking them. Power comes with glory. Glory not by choice, or glory by force. They must glorify you. They must celebrate you because you have something. Why do you think? Why do you think some police officers they harass some people because of gun? If you talk to them, I will shoot you. <laughs> yes, sir. The person you can slap on normally, you say yes, sir. Too. Why? Because gun is there. Now, power comes with glory. Not glory by choice alone, but glory by force. So when you have power, the devil is, is forcefully subdued. Look at it. The Bible says that I give you power to tread upon serpent and scorpion and over other power of the enemy. Now look at the illustration God gave me. I mean, God gave us a first service. Look at 19. He said, I give you power to tread upon serpent and scorpion and over other, other power of the enemy. Which means... I give unto you power. But if you don't take my power, you will suffer from his own power. I give unto you power. So take my own to tread. So if you don't take my own, it will tread on you. That's why we pray and fast to secure power. But how do you do it? Look, chapter 1, from verse 4. And the spirit driving Jesus into the wilderness. And it was there. Look at the four verse from verse one. And it was there for forty days and forty nights. Doing what? Praying and fasting. Praying and fasting. Praying and fasting. And in verse fourteen, the Bible says, "And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit." He returned. So you must return with power, otherwise you suffer. You must return with power. After twenty-one days, you must not remain the same. Your declaration must come with manifestation. Amen. Not because you want to, it to happen, but because it must happen. Prayer and fasting enhances our authority level. Because we don't remain the same. Your tongue becomes God's extension of power. Your declaration becomes fortified by power. Your appearance smells God's presence. Jesus return in the power of the Spirit. You must return. Say, I must return. In the power of the Spirit. I must return. In the power of the Spirit. I must return. In the power of the Spirit. So shall it be. Say, Big Amen. Amen. Empowerment is the beginning of divine announcement. Empowerment. Is the beginning of divine announcement. When you are empowered, your announcement will become global. I'm telling you, Luke 4 37. The Bible says, and his fame spread across the region. His fame, Luke 4 37, his fame spread across. Everybody started hearing about him. In fact, there was a scripture I read, Matthew chapter 8. The Bible says, and Jesus Christ departed when he heard about the death of John the Baptist. He departed to the wilderness by boat. The Bible says they came to meet him by foot. He traveled by boat to the wilderness, to the desert. Multitude came from the cities to meet him by foot. What a mystery. But here now, we, we are in the city, but we are still doing transportation, free transport. They went through by virtue of what they were looking for. And for the purpose of what? To hear him. He went by foot, by, by boat, and they went to meet him by foot from the cities. From the cities. Now, that is power. They were looking for power. They were looking for answer. Anyone that has power, have the answer. 
anyone that should have the power will have the answer. Glory to God. Amen. That's the realm this church is going to. Amen. Very soon, you see people traveling from other countries to come and book a hotel for Sunday service here. Amen. It's not prayer, watch it. Watch it. It is not because of me. Because God has ascended, I mean, God has descended into one of Pretoria. Amen. For the purpose of liberation of many. Amen. Which testimonies we have been seeing severally. Glory to God. Amen. At any level, when power comes in, advancement sets in. At any level you are. At any level you are. That's why when you see a thousand year, it's still going to become a millionaire. Amen. You see a millionaire, it's going to become a billionaire. Amen. A billionaire also going to become a trillionaire. A trillionaire also going to become a zillionaire. Just like that. Because there is always a new level at the top. Amen. And that's why empowerment is in degrees. And we experience change of levels in empowerment through prayer and fasting among others. Ezekiel 47, 1 to 5. The Bible says, it took me across the river and it, it got to my ankle level. A thousand cubits further, it reached my knee level. A thousand cubits further, my loins level. A thousand cubits further, it got to a point that is now a river that I cannot but just swim. Change of levels. Change of levels. Like I was sharing humorously in first service, by this week, this month again, using text message to pray for somebody who's whose veins have collapsed. Already, you know, gone. The baby was, was gone in the hospital. And they sent me a text message, a WhatsApp message. And I decree and declared, baby, come back to life. Baby shall not die. There will be intervention. By WhatsApp. And immediately they read it and they said, they said amen. The, 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 the veins came back to life. Yeah. On the spot, to the glory of God. Don't remain the same, sir. Don't, if you fast like this and your destiny does not change, then you are, you are in shame. Don't remain the same. Don't be the same person you were in December. You can't fast 21 days and January I see the same thing. Ah! You are wasting your time. You can't be fasting and not be, and, uh, I mean, and not be dominating. Please understand, the reason why we fast and pray among others is to enter a new level, a new level, a new level, a new realm. Glory to God. Why empowerment? Empowerment because to subdue your enemies. Psalm 66, verse 3. Say unto God, thou art terrible, thou art terrible art thou in thy works. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves unto thee. Greatness of thy power. Greatness of thy power. There are some people that will fight you in your dream, but you'll be winning them. Why? Because you are too strong in the day. So in the night, they can't try you. The rate at which you pray in the day, even your sleep is fire. Amen. I'm telling you, your sleep is fire. They come near you, they fall. The birds that fly across your house, they will just be dying. He said, why is they dying now? I don't know. I say, you believe me, but they'll be dying. They smell your name, they fry. Amen. They remember you, they run mad. Amen. That's fire. You enter a dimension that ah, you become, you know what, what Nigerians, the Yoruba land say, Mako, touch not. Don't go near. Don't go. You know, we have different type of cables. There are cables that, you know, radio cable. You can touch it and still feel okay. There's no beauty, you know. You enjoy yourself. Now, there's a cable, you know, that can carry all this um, cable in church here. You can still enjoy yourself. But try high tension wire cable. You will try yourself in heaven or hell, as the case may be. Now, birds and bats, they perch on cables. But let their body touch the tension wire, they fry. I like you to know that not all witches can attack just anybody. There are some people, they don't go near them. But it's a power level. There are some people when they hear the name, say, I've told you, don't go there again. Ah, I want you. Why? Because they've suffered in the hand of such people before. This day you are entering that dimension. Yeah. Today you are entering that dimension. Yeah. There are some people, I'm telling you, witches are dying because of them every week. And the more they die, the more devil is angry with those who he sent. But I told you not to say now. 
I told you, you don't know how much you have lost because of this person. Now, they are complaining. Why? Because power level is not normal. That's why we need to be fasting. To grow in power. To subdue your enemies. There are some people they don't deserve to even talk to you. But because your power level is so low, they see you, they even spit at you. Can't pick it up. Care of nonsense. And but because you don't know, you, you, I mean, he said, well, he's where? He said, he's where? He's where? Didn't you hear what Papa said at all night? Kill your enemies. Is he here? Pray for him. Pray for which enemy? Anyone that says you will not go, die now. Yes. Because if you die, you go to hell. Ow. Anyone that sits on your path, I decree their death in the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone that is fighting your progress. Anyone that is sitting on your destiny. Paraga Shakarada. By the power at work in this service, I decree that destruction in the name of Jesus Christ. Every grandmother, grandfather, every uncle, every auntie that is sitting on your papers, sitting on your marriage, sitting on your family, I decree Holy Ghost fire consume them in the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone that says over oh, their dead body, will you make it? I decree they are dead now. They are dead now. They are dead now. They are dead now. In the name of Jesus. If you keep watching, you keep suffering. If you keep watching, you keep suffering. If you keep watching, you keep suffering. Devil is not interested in your progress. Neither do his agents. Neither do his agents. So that's why we need to grow in power. So that we won't suffer. Your days of suffering are over. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. When we come for impartation service like this, we are coming to enter a new level. Yeah. When you come for impartation service like this, you are entering a new level. Not the same you that entered is going back. Why? You are going back with a cloak. A cloak. That is a, a clothing of empowerment. Amen. Not the one of your cloth alone, but in your spirit. The things your parents will reflect your source. Your speech will reflect who born you. <laughs> they see your face. They see the grace. By virtue of the cloak. So don't ever expect the shame you suffered before now to still oppress you after the service. You are returning to defeat every of your enemies in the name of Jesus Christ. So by impartation, we come to take cloak of our master. Second Kings 2 verse 14, the Bible says that and um, he took the mantle of Elijah and that fell from him and he smote the river, river Jordan and he parted Ida and Tida. Which means the battles you confronted that finished you the last time, you are going back to finish all battles from today. The exam you failed before, you are going back to write it and defeat the exam. The people that have mocked you before, you are going back to mock them back. Because glory is descending upon your life now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Why we access impartation through prayer and fasting and laying on events, we can also access impartation through prophetic mantle. That was what happened to Elijah and Elijah, which is our context today. What do you want from the unction from God's servant? What do you want? What is it that you can see in him? What is it you can see in him? Now the richest pastor in the world. Are you not privileged to be under his authority? Are you, can't you see that the same grace must flow in your life? Amen. Can't you see that in your organization you must be the richest? Amen. Whether you're a cleaner or a, or a clerk, or no matter, it doesn't matter. What you are doing is not the blessing. I mean, it's not what brings your blessing. The blessing of the Lord make it rich. Not the blessing of your work. The blessing of the Lord. Not the blessing of being a, eh, not the blessing of being a driver. The blessing of the Lord. Not the blessing of being a, a, an accountant. The blessing of the Lord. Not the blessing of being of a, a, mm -mm. the blessing of the Lord make it rich. So the riches that you have is a function of the blessing of the Lord. Not the blessing of your work. You just be working to fulfill your righteousness. But the blessing will be flowing because you are a covenant practitioner. So that's why we are here. To enter a dangerous grace. 
that the rich will start calling you rich. Amen. You don't understand that statement. Then go there, we say that, ah, this David Adiba is so rich. As in, you can't comprehend the riches that you're having. By virtue, and he's so rich, he, they call him rich, but he's not calling you rich. You know, when a rich man is calling you rich, then you are not, uh, you are not just rich, you are richer. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. You are entering that realm from this service. Yes. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. But quickly, what is the process for impartation through the prophetic mantle? How? How? Now, understand this. Prophetic mantle is a medium for duplication and multiplication of grace. Duplication and multiplication of grace. The Bible says, Romans 1, 11, For I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gifts to the end, that ye may be established. Please understand that without duplication, there can't be a proper representation. If there is no duplication, there can't be proper representation. Before I, even, before I even became a pastor here, I mean, in Winners, being a member of the ordinary, there are places I appear that they tell me that, ah, you look like Papa. You speak like Papa. I was not even a pastor. I'm talking about 1999, 2000, 2001. I don't, I was not a pastor, but appearance alone, no, I can't. No, the way I talk, people say, ah, you talk like this person. Are you a member of Winners? I say, yes, I don't wonder. No, today, no, because, now, let to talk less of now. Understand that without a duplication, there can be a representation. When you carry the duplication, you naturally, naturally represent. Not mimically. Some people try to mimic Papa. I've never mimicked him in my life. But the grace flows. And it shows. I don't mimic him for what? I, you don't mimic your father. No, the gene is there. It will flow naturally. He said, eh, eh, I'm Papa. I'm yeah. I, that's not a fake. It flows naturally. Not because when the gene is there, you don't try to show it. It shows. If you are not a bastard of this commission, you must be rich. Amen. Say, I'm not a bastard not a of, this of this commission. Therefore, Therefore I must be rich. The grace of riches are flowing upon you now. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Not by stealing. Papa is a multi billionaire. He didn't steal. He's working. In the same way, I must be rich. Amen. That's why we are teaching the covenant practices that takes you to that dimension. Amen. That's why we are teaching the things that. Look at what he said at all night. He said, Help me to make my vision work. Help me by you obeying. Doing what I tell you to do. Read the books. Hear the messages. Obey the instructions. That's all. Once you connect your fan to the socket, the fan will blow. You don't need to pray. Once you connect your, your radio, you know I mean, you put your, plug, your radio cord to the wire, you will hear impact radio talking. Why? You are connected. If you stay connected, there will be a flow of grace. It will flow. But how will it flow? Number one, receive the person of this minister. Receive his person. If they are receiving the prophet, the name of prophet shall receive a prophet reward. Matthew 10, 41. Receive it and believe in his ministry. He couldn't do miracles because of their unbelief. Mark 6, 5. Matthew 21 and Mark 6, 5. Believe his ministry. So Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20. He said, Believe the Lord your God shall be established and believe his prophets. So, which means it's a dual platform of belief system. Don't just believe God alone. That's what God said. Believe the Lord your God. It shall be established. Also, believe his prophets. Believe his prophets. Believe his prophets. So, if you believe God, I don't believe his prophets, you are half baked. It's not complete. We didn't write the scripture. God wrote it. So believe the Lord your God shall be established. Believe his prophet. So shall ye prosper. So shall ye prosper. So shall ye prosper. So your prosperity is connected to your faith in your prophets. I didn't write it in scriptures. Number two. Honor him 
in your heart. Honor him in your heart. In absence, in presence, honor him, sir. I will never speak against my father. Anywhere they speak against him, I re- either come out of the place or fight back there. Like I usually, like I told some individuals, I say, you see, no matter how bad your wife is, you never spoil your wife in the public. Never. Let him, let him be wee wee on the bed. You will never spoil her. Ah, no, that nonsense wife. Down that bed wait. You will never. Why? Because shame is your shame. Yes. Even if the one that talk, 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 and they come to report, they, they, they come to report your wife. You talking, talking. Say, leave her for me. Ah, leave her. Thank you. You can now go home and and, uh, and bombard her. But why you are there? No worries. Why is your own? Please, don't speak against anyone that God sent to bless you. Let your heart be blessing them. Like I said, some time ago, when God called them, you were not there. You are not worthy of judging them. I will never see the error of my master. When you see the error of your master, you see error in life. Don't look for the errors of anyone God plays over you. Honor them in your heart. To speak against them is to speak against God. God showed me one scripture last week. And I will just mention it briefly here. Acts chapter 5, verse 1 to 2. The Bible says that there was a time all the apostles, they sell whatever they have and they bring it. I mean, the, everyone, they bring it to the apostles' feet. And Ananas and, and Sapphira, they sold their own. And they went to meet Peter. And Ananas said that, we sold it for this amount. Ah. And Peter said, why are you lying? Why did you allow Satan to enter into you to sin against God? And God made me to understand, anything you do against a pastor sent to you is against God. I'm telling you. I had it, it was in the gathering. Anything you do against a pastor that is sent to you is against God. And you can't be against God and <laughs> you are finished. Who can stand against our Lord? No one can. No one will. Who can stand against our king? No, you can't survive it. Honor them in your heart as if you are honoring God. That's how to enjoy the blessings. Number three, crave for what he carries. What do you see in Papa that you want? What do you see in Bishop Whenever that you want? A heart that pants after God. A heart that is carried away with God. A passion-driven person. Dangerously connected to God. All of God and none of him. Someone that is success is ringing bells even in the hell. Someone that heaven is, is worshipping the grace of God upon his life. God desires something tangible. Not Lord, give me his kind of white suit. To do what? To fly like an angel. Desire the kind of heart. The grace of God he carries. The largeness of his heart for God and his kingdom. Look at what he said. Pay transport for the whole church. Hundreds of millions in a particular year. Hundreds of millions. I once told us, yeah, how he paid school fees of landmark students. Almost one billion, one year. If God give you one billion now, and you'll be out of South Africa. You, <laughs> straight to Australia, isn't it? I trust you. Australia or Canada, because that's the next place. When you come to South Africa and uh, ah, Canada, ah, Canada, Australia, Abby, that's the trend. I know, as you know, I've uh, uh, seen a number of things. People don't try to go to U.S. again. That U.S. is like, uh, the climate is not... Uh, <laughs> but uh, first thing, ah, Canada. Ah, yeah. Then Australia. Then, after Australia, I don't know where it's next again. <laughs> you go to heaven. <laughs> Have you? <laughs> where is better than <laughs> Australia? <laughs> it's heaven now. Go, don't go to heaven now. Otherwise, go and build. Go and join those who are doing uh, concrete. 
but they are still. He said, I, I go back to my father's to build Abi. So he joined to carry Conquere, you know. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Grave for what he carries. Second Kings chapter 2, verse 9. The Bible says, Elijah said, Elijah asked Elijah, What do you want? He said, I want the double of your anointing, the double of your grace, the double of your grace, the double of your grace, the double. And he said, Ah, you have asked for a very hard thing. But if you see me when I'm being caught up, when I'm being taken up, it shall be unto you. Saints, I like to say the truth here. I have craved for grace over the years and I've been seeing it in my life. Sincerely. Sincerely. I've not, I've not, I don't know it, I know it happens, but I've not come in contact with people using text message to raise the dead. Sincerely. I know it might have been happening, I'm sure, but I've not come in contact. And this is not the first time, this is not the second time. Using text message to raise the dead. Hush. That's not common. It's not common, sir. It's not common. It's not common. What gave you audacity to believe that if you send a message and they read and the dead will come back to life? Dead, far, not dead. dead. Crave for what he carries. And let me say something. Whatever you get from him can never be ordinary. Can never be at his level. Why? The glory of the latter house shall surpass the former. So what you get from him can't be the same. That's why Elisha got double. Because scriptures cannot be broken. God will not give you the same thing he gave you. No. He said the glory of the latter house shall surpass the former. The path of the just shall shine like the brighter and brighter. So it can only get better. And that's why he keeps saying that you go higher than me while I'm alive. So what are you craving for? What are you looking for? Let me mention one more point here. Stay connected. For a continuous flow, stay connected. Tell your neighbor, stay connected. Say, stay connected. Say, stay connected. I don't know if this woman is in service today. I told, I saw her on Friday. She came to church first time. She had lupus disease. Lupus disease is a disease that does not have cure. Go and check it on the internet. No cure for it. And when you have lupus disease, all your vital organs are in danger. Your kidney, your liver, everything is in danger. In fact, it's a dangerous. Your skin starts bleaching. By the grace of God, by privilege. Last year, I prayed for her, by privilege. She got healed on the spot. Then, right then. All she couldn't do before she started doing. She went away. Now, the thing came back again. She came again. You know, pastor, large heart. We pray again. God did again. Went again. Now, when I saw her on Friday, I said, Madam, I've not seen you. She said, you know, I have my church. Ah. It's okay. It's fine. I said, but you see, Ma, the truth is this. I'm not against any church. Where God, you rescued your life. Shouldn't you know that that's where God has planted you? That's where many of us are missing it. We try to use God. When we finish using it, we dump him. Understand that stay connected. First Corinthians 15, verse 58. He says that, I mean, he said, Therefore, my beloved children, he said, Be immovable, steadfast, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Be steadfast, be steadfast, be steadfast. If God has raised the dead in this church two, three, four, five times, ah, uh ah, -uh, shouldn't you know that God is here? You have seen cripples walking by your eyes. Ah, uh -uh, shouldn't you know God is here? Ah, you have seen testimonies, different testimonies. But you should know that I need to stay connected. Don't choose service to come for. Make every service an appointment with your maker. Because I know I had first Sunday, not just a prophetic service. No, there's no need. When is anointing? Oh, third Sunday, I'm going. Ah, ah. It shows that you are trying to use God. You don't want a relationship with Him, and it's not the best for you. This year, make up your mind. I'm not missing any service. That's my, that's my source of life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Stay connected and you will never lose the grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 